Okay, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this workshop session. And welcome to learn something about osteoporosis, costs what are related to osteoporosis, porotic fractures, and how we can significantly decrease those costs with a new technology. My name is Ossi Riekkinen and I'm the CEO of Bone Index. Bone Index is one of the most promising life science startup companies in Scandinavia. Last year we were selected to be one of the most significant new medical device manufacturer in Europe. We have very long history in, in osteoporosis research. We are a startup company from Kuopio University and Kuopio University Hospital. But I have also very strong personal relationship to osteoporosis. Because my grandmother-in-law, Ellie, she is at the moment 83 years old. Head is working very nicely, but she hardly can move. She moves like this and she has to use wheelchair even inside the house. And only what we can do is uh, use strong painkillers. And the reason for this condition is disease which name is osteoporosis. Of course, in this kind of cases, you start to think what you can do differently. Because in Ellie's case, there were maybe two or three bone fractures before she got referral from primary care to the central hospital to the bone density measurement with this kind of TXA device. But this is not a typical situation because osteoporosis is highly underdiagnosed disease. Worldwide, about 75% of osteoporotic patients are not diagnosed, do not receive any treatment. And if you think about uh, this situation in Finland, we have uh, about 400,000 osteoporotic patients. Only 10% are treated. And we have even more these kind of devices in Finland than in the UK if we compare to the size of population. So there is no true access for this kind of measurement because this is in hospitals, not in primary care. And if we think about costs related to the osteoporosis and osteoporotic bone fractures, we have different kind of references. We know that in Europe, about 40 billion annually. USA, 20 billion. UK, 2 billion. So billions and billions. So this disease is very high, includes very high costs. But what kind of disease osteoporosis really is? Here we can see two nice images. Here we have a normal bone, hip bone and osteoporotic hip bone. And uh, the basic uh, situation is that bone, uh, bone mass has decreased and structure has changed. And for example, if we look this cortical bone area, we see that cortical bone thickness in osteoporosis will decrease. And uh, these are related that in, if we compare totally normal bone density, patient with totally normal bone density to the osteoporotic patient, there is 11 times higher fracture risk. So how common this disease is? In the UK, it is estimated that there is 3 million osteoporotic patients. Worldwide, 200 million. And as you, as you can understand, this is very common disease. There is very high costs related to this disease. Hospital-based diagnostics, diagnostics is not the solution. We cannot handle those patients in hospitals. And that was the reason why we developed PINDEX. So PINDEX is world first reliable point of care instrument for osteoporosis diagnostics. And if we think about my grandmother law case, we drank a cup of coffee in the kitchen and at the same time I make the measurements. So it is totally different than send patient to the hospital. We have CE mark and one week ago we received FDA clearance for this technology. And now we have done clinical validation with over 2,000 patients. And we really can say that we can diagnose 70% of patients under osteoporosis suspicion to be the healthy 
for osteoporotic, and only 30% really needs hospital-based DHA medicine. Then if we think about benefits, uh, what uh, this kind of technology may bring, of course the patient is the key, because with this kind of technique, we improve the access for diagnostics, we improve the access for effective treatment for those patients who really benefit from the treatment. And with that way, we prevent fractures and improve the quality of life. If you think about private clinics, this is new, new service for them. This is very important service for them. Then if you think about public health care and insurance companies, do you know what this meaning means? What we will save? Money, 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 money. Because we will decrease the costs from diagnostics and significantly decrease the costs from bone fractures, which is the big, big issue. Then if we think about pharmaceutical companies and nutritional companies, it is extremely important to increase awareness of this disease. And with awareness, we can expand the access for effective treatment and nutrition for those patients who really benefit from the treatment. After this introduction, I will demonstrate this measurement for you. I will be the test patient, so there is no patient security issues. In this case, I share my information for you. But this is the basic principle, how, how we make the measurement. So we measure tibia bone, tibia is pipe bone. So when we move transducer over the bone, we will see clearly two echoes. And the first echo comes from the upper surface of bone, and second echo comes from the inner surface of bone. So the time difference of those echoes tells us what is the thickness of cortical bone layer. And as you remember, what was the biological definition for osteoporosis? Cortical bone thickness has decreased. But by using this information, age, weight, and height, we analyze density index. And density index is now our estimation for hip bone mineral density, which is measured in hospital with DXA. And here you can see the measurement report so you can see cortical bone thickness, small one here, but the key is this density index. And you can see density index as a numerical value, but also in this green, yellow, red bar. And that is now important because Pindex is calibrated against hospital-based DXA measurement. And now we know that 90% of real osteoporotic patients measured with DXA in hospital we will get measurement result with Pindex, which is on red or yellow area. And now 90% of non-osteoporotic patients with hospital-based DXA will get measurement result, which is on green or yellow area. So when those patients who are on the yellow area are measured in, in hospital, we have 90% sensitivity and specificity for osteoporosis. And we have national guidelines in UK, but also in Finland, and international guidelines that if we have patient with risk factors and we get measurement result which is on red area, that is enough indication to start treat patient. We do not need DXA. But where that calibration comes from, and this is now very important to understand, and this is very logical to understand. So we have certain diagnostics and we, we select patients with that for the treatment, and with treatment we try to prevent fractures. But the key thing in this pathway is treatment, because now all pharmaceutical trials are done by using DXA. And with DXA, we have select who are osteoporotic, who are not osteoporotic, who will get treatment and who will not get treatment. And with that way, we really know who will benefit from the treatment. And that is the reason why we have to calibrate if we use some other technology against DXA and analyze these 90% sensitivity specificity thresholds. 
So we start to select the same patients for the treatment. And this is now exactly the same than that green, yellow, red bar in the result sheet. And this is also the only way how you can really calculate what is the cost effectiveness of this pathway. And I will show, show it the data for you. So this is very new data. Early this year, published in Osteoporosis International and also in World Congress of Osteoporosis. So we, we measured 445 patients under osteoporosis vision. Normally all went to the central-based DXA measurement. We analyzed this 90% sensitivity specificity threshold. So we analyzed that green, yellow, red bar. And what was the interesting? Normally 100% of those patients would go to the hospital. If we use Bindex, only 30% really needs that DXA measurement. So we can diagnose 70% of those patients in primary health care. Then we is investigated how this green, yellow, red bar works in larger population. In USA and in Finland, 1,830 patients. Results are totally same. 30% are in yellow area. And if we look real osteoporotic and real non-osteoporotic patients, sensitivity and specificity is about 90%. So technology works. But now the question is, what is the position of this device and technology in current diagnostic and treatment guidelines? In Finland and in UK and most of European countries, we use so-called FRAX calculation tool. And now we have to thank UK and Professor John Keynes and his colleagues about this tool, because with FRAX, we, we ask about seven yes or no questions. So this is risk factor questionnaire. And the good thing in this uh, calculation tool is that medical doctor in London, a medical doctor in Manchester can evaluate the patient with same way. And you also will receive information when you should send patient to the DXA. And in this study, we investigated that how about if we do not immediately send patient to the DXA, but we do Bindex in this space. And the interesting was that in this pathway, when we use FRAX and Bindex together, only 16% of patients need DXA measurement. If we do not use Bindex in this phase, then 57% of patients would need DXA. So we have go through, gone through this clinical evidence, but how about cost effectiveness? We have evaluated two different pathways. The current pathway where we use FRAX, and with the FRAX score, we, we select who, who go to DXA and then who are treated and who are not treated. Then we make new pathway where we, after FRAX, use Bindex. And only those patients who have yellow result with Bindex, those are sent to the DXA. And now we have to understand that this pathway is not just screening cost. We have nurse working time, we have medical doctor working time, we have travel costs, we have screening costs. And this pathway in Finnish economic data it is almost 500 euro. And I assume that it is pretty close to UK economy data also. But if we use Bindex in that phase, we can reduce the cost over 200 euro. Then we evaluate this, these pathways with five different patient population. We used 65 years old woman with previous fracture, 75 years old woman with and without previous fracture and 85 years old woman with and without previous fracture. All of these patient groups, if we use FRAX, needs DXA measurement. And then we investigated what is the effect of screening cost 
in, in cost effectiveness. And if we use 50 euro to 100 euro screening cost for Pindex, this is still extremely cost effective. And the lesson of this study is that the screening cost is not the key. The key is simplify the process. Because there you can decrease the costs. And then we all watching this fighting against Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. And this is also message now to the USA. Because we have clear evidence that when we increase bone densitometry measurements, we will significantly decrease the costs from bone fractures. And at the moment in USA, there is about 2 million bone mineral density measurements. But the, that is the real world. But the clinical need, if we look guidelines, is that there is need over 50 million bone mineral density measurements. And if we use, for example, this kind of cost-effective technology, and we measure only 25 million risk group patients, we will save over 2 billion in USA. So now, Mr. Trump, Mrs. Clinton, do you want that your citizens in future go like this or go like this? It is your decision. And I look forward invitation to support your president campaign because I think that the greatest country in the world needs strong leader. And with this instrument, we can measure who, who is the strongest. <laughs> so summary slide. So we will significantly reduce the costs from bone fractures and we want to improve quality of life with lower costs and we want to be most preferred partner in the area of osteoporosis. And now if you would like to ask something after this session, here you can see my contact details and also here are contact details for our distributors in Europe at the moment. And now we start the second phase of this workshop and that is the live demonstration. And now, just a moment, I open the computer. And now we are waiting the demo effect of this workshop. So what we are doing, I will show it to you, my critical information, what are needed for this kind of measurement. moment. Okay, and now I should press this button. Okay. So, there is my name, my date, date of birth, sex, ethnicity. Then we have to put weight, 88. Then my height, 2. Then we have to measure where is the right measurement location. And for that, we use this kind of measurement stick. So the measurement location is one third of length of tibia under the knee joint space. And in, in practice, we measure left leg, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm right hand. So it is easier for me to now measure right leg. So we feel knee joint space and put a little mark there, just like this. Yes. Okay. So I, I have marked now knee joint space. Then there is a little arrow in this measurement stick, and this arrow will be now located to the distal head of tibia. Okay. And then we look what is the number in this measurement stick. It is number 10. And we have a second scale here, and we can look where is number 10 over there. So that is measurement location. So now this is 
one third of length of tibia. And then what we need, we put here number 10, then we calibrate device, and now we have that demo effect. We put some ultrasound shield. Now we are waiting for the software. And nothing happens. <laughs> Let's do this way, just a moment. In this phase, we need to drink some water. <laughs> yes. Ah. Well, now we lost connection to the whole computer. <laughs> Can you please help me? <laughs> Nothing happens. And now in this phase, when we, when we struggle with the computer, we can a little bit change the program that let's take questions and questions now. So please, if you have any questions, may be just as important to try and prevent the osteoporosis from developing in the first place rather than treating those that have got clear-cut osteoporosis, which is what you're attempting to, to um, uh, deal with. Uh, so the comment, the question is, osteoporosis affects the body in different ways and at different sites to different extents. For example, the neck or femur and the spine are often affected. So when you take a measurement in the leg, how well does it correlate with these other measurements at the site where people are, are vulnerable in terms yes. of fractures? Um, and uh, when you are doing sensitivity and specificity, are you relating it to a measurement of DEXA done for the bone mineral density in the whole body at a localized area or combinations of these? Great, great questions. And that, is, that uh, was the key thing when I uh, discussed about the calibration, because now all those 2,000 women were measured with Pindex from the tibia and with the DEXA from the hip. And the key thing is now to uh, analyze this green, yellow, red bar against DEXA. So we have uh, against, for, for the DEXA osteoporosis, we have 90% sensitivity and specificity. So DEXA is the, is the definition what what we have used for osteoporosis.
Yes, please. This is, this is very non, non-medical, but my brother uh, found out he had osteoporosis. He, he's in Australia, and he found out he had osteoporosis when he was 50. So I'm from a very big family, so he told all the rest of us so that we could actually get tested. And some people decided to, and some didn't. But when I got tested, they did two different tests from two different parts of me, and they said because the curves were different, then it was quite likely that I was going to get it. So that was several years ago. I now have osteopenia, but it was very interesting that actually he would never have normally got picked up. It was only because it was something that his particular doctor was specialised in. He was very excited when he told him that he'd got it (laughs) because it was his specialist subject. But I just wonder how how you can, uh, you know... It isn't always a typical thing. How will people know to get tested? Do you know what I mean? Is it yeah, something yeah. that become, could become a much more common general yeah. test? In, in, uh, in Europe, we think that there have to be some risk factors before we start uh, investigating the patient. And that is the reason why to use PRAX, because then we can find those patients who, who, are, who are most... Uh, highest probability for osteoporosis and fracture, fracture probability. But in USA, we have different kind of guidelines. And in USA, the age is a risk factor. So over 65 years old, that is, that is risk factor. Well, my mother had osteoporosis, but it wasn't actually diagnosed until she'd had several fractures. Same, same and I was absolutely shocked how many fractures she'd had, and it still hadn't been diagnosed. That, that is the challenge. Now we have connection to the computer. So now, now we are on the same face. So I, I calibrate the device, and now measuring is on. And now what I'm doing, I will move the transducer over the bone, and when I see clearly those two echoes, I stop the movement, and software accepts the signal. So it. This way. Repeat the measurement five times. And that's it. We can see now those five measurements. So the first echo comes from the upper surface, the second from the inner surface, and time difference tells us what is the thickness. Here are those all five measurements, and in this way, in phase, we also make uh, statistical analysis that we compare these measurements against. Now all are green, so this is accepted. Then we can continue, look the results, and here we can see my cortical bone thickness was 3.2 millimeter. By the way, in my left tibia it is 2.8 millimeter, so there is difference between the size. And now by using this information, age, weight, and height, my density index is 0.1.2. Zero 02, and that is now our estimation for hip bone mineral density measured with DEXA, and you can see with the arrow the measurement results. So this is fast, this is uh, easy to use, and we have very good clinical evidence that this is reliable. So thank you. So if you have any questions, I, I look forward to answer. There, there is one. Do you measure, are all the bones similar? If you use your tibia, do you, is, is that uh, representative of all your bones in your body? Uh, in clinical validations, we have measured two sites in tibia and one site in radius. But this proximal tibia site is the best predictor of hip bone mineral density. So, um, how does somebody get it done? Excuse me? How does somebody get it done then? Right now, when you come to the exhibition area downstairs, I can measure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, that I was serious. 
that is why we are here. So we are looking for different opportunities. So please come to discuss with, with me and Tony in, in the exhibition area. Okay, thank you.